Hello everyone and welcome into episode 3 of our My Team Career Mode. Last round out of Cheddar, we had our best qualifying, I mean it should have been, it was our second race. P13, you'll have to go watch that episode to see how we went in the race though. Uh, very, very interesting result. Anyway, gearing up for our home race. Uh, we will have some upgrades on the car, again, thankfully. We'll have a power unit upgrade for the energy energy store, I think. Or maybe, maybe it's chassis, I can't remember. Something, something energy store related, and uh, some front downforce, so very, very happy with that. Uh, gonna have a go at the Pirelli hot laps. Uh, I'm not comfortable with these cars even in the dry, so in the wet, as you can imagine, yeah, we've completely missed our breaking point. We we ruined our attempt at this multiple times. So no acclaim or financial bonus for us before this race. Looking at the performance index, McLaren are now officially higher than us on that chart. They're already miles quicker than us at Saudi. Uh, so not very optimistic and practice did not make me very optimistic either. Look at, it, at our best attempt at a qualifying run two seconds off the pace so okay, we, we could be in for a bit of a struggle here coming. at least we did manage to get a few practice programs done in quick practice so we'll have a little bit of a boost to our resource points and a couple of development boosts so very very happy about that at least we may be able to make this car uh, at least feel a little bit more uh, drivable although Marcus doesn't seem to be struggling it's it's just me at the moment uh, I am, I'm having to run so much more downforce to get any sort of handle on this car, which is really uh, affecting us quite a bit in a straight line with our, with our pace in a straight line already being quite poor. So we'll see how we go. But anyway, let's jump into qualifying. Alright, so, as I said, definitely running far too much downforce on this car, but uh, I don't really understand the setups on this game just yet, and I'm honestly just trying to make the car uh, drivable for me, realistically. Anyway, let's head out on our first attempt at a lap here, going through the fast left-right, uh, heading into the DRS zone. Hopefully this lap's not going to be too bad. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Ark. I, I appreciate you letting me know that. Um, we're going to finish this lap anyway, probably breaking a lot of FIA safety regulations, but may as well see how we go. We head up now across the line. Where's, where's our first lap going to put us? Puts us in P6 at the moment, but it's only a 20.6. Hopefully this is going to be fixed for us, this DRS issue. Uh, looks like the team's on it at the moment. Oh my goodness, we're, we're over a second. We're over a second down on our teammate, especially in the middle sector. We're losing a lot of time, unsurprisingly, running far too much downforce. Uh, and the last sector as well. Obviously no rear downforce there with our DRS failure. Let's try our next lap now. Okay, be careful, the DRS is stuck open. You're gonna have to come in so we can try to attempt to fix. Pit for repairs now. Mark, you were you were meant to fix that, mate. Uh, it was saying it was being fixed in the pits. So what's going on? Anyway, we're gonna break some more FIA safety regulations and we're gonna try and do this final lap in quality with a DRS failure, so DRS is gonna be open for the entire lap. Um Honestly, it probably won't be classified as a valid lap anyway, because we are breaking those rules. Probably multiple penalty points. You can see massively struggling through this first sector. No rear grip whatsoever, uh, and no confidence in the car either. Uh, I, we are going to gain a lot of time through this long straight, where the other, down uh, other DRS section was removed from in real life. Uh, and actually up on our time as we head into the final sector, so not too bad. Uh, maybe we can actually manage to pull this off as we go through the third to last corner up on the curb. Well, that's that lap done then, I guess, and quality over. Um, like it was probably going to be nowhere not near what we needed anyway. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're 
We're over a second and a half slower than Latifi. Marcus, though, getting into Q2. Very well done, our second Q2 appearance for the team. Massive acclaim boost there. Very, very happy to see that. Um, yeah. See, Marcus has got a handle on the car. Very well done. Let's get to the race. The crowd are here, and it's brilliant to see them lining the track here in Albert Park. It's going to be a fantastic day of racing. Welcome, everybody, to the Australian Grand Prix. So here we are at Albert Park Circuit, 3.28 miles around with the streets making for a bumpy surface with little undulation. There are 14 corners around the lake with the best passing opportunities coming at turn one and turn three. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, George Russell, and Perez. Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Bottas, and Lando Norris. Sonoda, Gasly, Kevin Magnussen, and Joe. Ricardo, Armstrong, Mick Schumacher, and Sebastian Vettel. Stroll, Albon, Latifi, and the rookie. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. All right, so Marcus unfortunately unable to improve on that position in Q2, but still a very, very good result for him in qualifying. Uh, getting ready for the race now. We're just adjusting our front wing a little bit from quali, uh, trying to somehow get more turn in at the front of the car. Uh, messing around with the strategy, I thought maybe a two-stop might be an option, but as you can see, it's it's five, uh, estimated five seconds slower than the default one-stop of medium to hard, so that's that's a no-go there. Um, so we're going to spend a bit, bit of time messing around with this still, but eventually I decided we're just going to stick with a stick with a one-stop, but instead of starting on the mediums, we're going to go on the hards. That way we avoid the tire warm-up. Uh, being as much of an issue during the race itself and uh, hopefully it'll only be a little bit of a problem for the first half a lap or so but getting ready for formation lap now um, yeah really not really not confident going into this race we'll just have to see how we go hopefully maybe there's a few incidents in front of us we can maybe capitalize on that and at least gain a few positions throughout this race okay, so let's uh go getting ready though for uh, to take up our grid slot we seem to have done a decent job of heating up these rear tires uh fronts a little bit cold still so we'll have uh, very little grip on turn in turn one let's see how our grid position goes managed purple there beautiful let's get ready for the start of this race okay, now getting ready there. for five red lights Away we go, both Ferraris getting a very nice start, us getting a very nice initial start as well, but as we get up through the gears, God, we've had wheel spin all the way up to seventh gear there as we head into turn one. And there's some cars going slow, there's been some sort of incident, we're forced to the grass to avoid it. No idea what's happened there, lots of damage potentially in front of us from a lot of cars. That was, that was a very, very strange incident there, not sure what happened. Um, and a massive gap now between the two, between the two McLarens, I think, in this trainer cars. So, okay, very, very big incident the happening there. Uh, let's let's go back and have a look at our teammates on board to see exactly what happened there. Um, so, having a look here now, Marcus getting quite a good start. Uh, Joe in front also getting getting a nice start. Uh, Gasly in front a little bit slow. Uh, as we head into turn one, let's see what happens here. Trying to go three wide with Joe there, and there's some contact made. That was never going to work. Let's have a look on board with Guan, uh, Joe Guan Yu as well. Again, uh, he gets yeah, he gets a ripper start compared to Gasly in front. I can see why he wanted to try and make up the position here. Uh, but as we head to towards turn one here, you can see going three wide here is never going to work. Oh, and he's just accelerated to the side of Gasly as well. Uh, that's, that's a mess of an incident. Looks like Vettel got some damage there as well. Um, very unfortunate for those guys. Heading on to the end of lap one now. And who have we got? We have uh, Joe, Vettel and Albon all pitting with damage. So very unfortunate for those guys. But hey, we get to capitalize on it. And at the end of lap one, 
We're up into P19 without making a single overtake, and I think we're going to be struggling to do anything about it too, as Latifi and Schumacher battle in front. We might have an opportunity on these guys, but oh, they've got so much straight line speed on us, man. It's, it's insane. Uh, on to lap four. Schumacher's cleared Latifi. He's pulled away two and a half seconds already. We're just managing to hang on to the back of him, really pushing these hard tyres here as we go through here. Ooh, massive snap of oversteer there. Very, very lucky to hold onto it. Let's go back and have a look at that from the broadcast cameras in a sec as we run massively wide there. Um, yeah, having a look at this, let's see. Oh, that was very, very close to an early DNF in this race. Uh, very, very lucky to hold onto that car. Um, yeah. Really, really struggling on these hard compound tyres at the moment. Uh, on to lap 9. Signs behind us has pitted. Not sure. I believe he started on the medium, so he might have incurred some early wing damage at some point in this race. Uh, you can see we've now lost the DRS to Latifi. We've had a couple of poor laps in a row. And, oh... We are truly the definition of washed in this car, losing the gap to Latifi. I know, I know he's on mediums, uh, and we're running too much downforce, but that's, that's pretty poor form. Thankfully, the downforce that we've got on the car, we've managed to get just back within DRS range at the end of this lap. But uh, it's, it's not looking good for our race pace at the moment. Um, and we've got a bunch of cars behind us on softs. They will have to pit again, but they may have the opportunity to catch and pass us by the end of this race. So not looking great at the moment, especially now with signs catching up on us. He'll probably hamper us a little bit, overtaking us. On to the end of lap 10, and yeah, this time, that's it. The DRS is gone. We've got signs behind us. Uh, our pace is not looking good at all in this car at the moment. Um, going through turn one. We're trying to close in on Latifi, but we got nothing. Signs behind us. What are you doing out there, Carlos? Jesus, mate. I'm not even trying to defend from you here, but what are you... What, you're not going to pass us doing that, mate. Way off the track as we have a massive massive uh, snap of oversteer on the exit of turn three there. That's going to give Signs the opportunity. Yep, he's right on the back of us. Through this newly altered fast right-hander, he gets that move done very, very easily there. And he's out of here. That is us down to P18. On to lap 13 now. Bunch of the medium runners now starting to pit. We're going to come out roughly, it looks like, between Magnuson and Ricardo. Yes, just getting in front of uh, Magnuson now into turn one. We have to leave him with a little bit of space on the apex there just to avoid contact. Uh, so that's uh, us for now up to P16, but I very much doubt we'll be holding onto this position for long. Those horses are very, very fast in a straight line. Magnuson on fresh hard tyres. He is going to have a little bit of a tyre warm-up phase, as you can see us pulling away initially. But on lap 14, he's right on the back of us, and he gets that move done very, very easily in a turn one. There's nothing we can do there. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be really, really struggling here over the next few laps, I think, with all these much faster cars passing us on much fresher hard compound tyres. Uh, on to the next lap, though, which following after... Kevin, and uh, yellow flag in front, it's, it's the McLaren of Daniel Ricciardo, uh, he's got no luck in real life and he's got no luck in the game, retiring from an engine failure at his home Grand Prix, absolute shocker, at least there's still another Australian in the race, which is me, but we're having a shocker as well as we head into this right hander, Gasly looking to go up the inside of us, we're not fighting him here, uh, just holding the outside, but he doesn't manage to get that move done there. Um, very unfortunate. I thought he would get that move done very, very easily there, but unfortunately he might end up hampering our race a little bit more here as we head on to the main straight. Um, yeah, no, he's going to get us very easily here. That's no issue. Not holding us up too much at all. We're not holding him up. Uh, let's move on. Lap 16, Lando Norris on the back of us. This, this lap we're heading in, so again, we're not looking to fight him at all. And there's, there's no fight anyway. So much quicker in a straight line. Absolutely flies past us. And, yeah, there's nothing we can do there. We're not driving awfully at this stage either. It's just this car, very, very difficult to drive at this stage. Although you wouldn't know it from Marcus. He's pitted and he's only a couple of seconds behind us. But uh, we're going to pull into the pits now onto our medium compound tyres. Trying to maximise as much time gained into the pit lane as possible here. Maybe braking a little bit early there. Not quite used to it yet. As for whatever reason, in pit lane, we've got some massive audio bugs. Don't know what's going on here. 
Uh, optimal turn into the pits, so we're going to gain a little bit of time there. Very, very nice to see. No issues on the uh, putting the tyres on at all. Two and a half seconds stop. As we head out of the pits now, who are we going to come out of in front of? Are we going to beat Joe to turn one? No, we are not. We're going to have to break early to avoid contact there. And uh, in to P19, five seconds ahead of Albon and Vettel. So, Juan Yu Zhou, the only one to gain any time at the moment. But on to lap 18, we look at the minimap. Our teammate having a very nice battle with Lance Stroll by the looks of it. Right on the back of him on lap 18 uh, through the fast left right. Is he going to go for the move here into this uh, new turn 11, I believe? I can't remember the corner numbers now. He's going for it, but... Doesn't look like he can quite get that move done and Stroll manages to hold it around the outside defending that position. So Marcus maybe same similar issue to us, struggling with a little bit of straight line speed and unable to get quite far enough alongside before the corner. But on the very next lap, it, he looks like he's very, very close here. Again, leading into the same corner, this time looking around the outside. Can he get this move done? Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, that is a beautiful move there by Marcus. Very, very well done. Very good uh, position for the team, and he is up into P14. Meanwhile, on lap 25, we are chasing down Zhou Guanyu, absolutely flying at this stage, but we seem to have neglected something. Looks like we're a little bit low on fuel at this stage, so that could become an issue, but we haven't noticed that yet. We're still pushing really, really hard here, trying to keep up with uh, Zhou as we go into the final sector here. We still haven't noticed our fuel at all. We are right on the back of Joe trying to get this move done, but we, we just don't have the straight line speed. And look at the way he's just pulling away on the straight. We're trying to save up some battery so we can attack him later on, but okay, you're at the, the cars, moment, but remember, this is going to be a real, real issue times. for us as we gain so much time through the corners. You can see we're running still way too much downforce. Uh, but on lap, end of lap 26, we still haven't noticed yet that, uh, that fuel indicator has been red for a long time along this straight, so I don't know how low we are, but this could become a problem towards the end of this race. If Edel only six and a half seconds behind, so if we were to run out of fuel in the dying moments of the final lap, this could be a massive problem for our position, even if it is only for P18. Look, our fuel indicator is still red all the way along that straight, all the way along this next straight leading into turn three and we still haven't checked our, our fuel on our uh, MFD at all. We're entirely focused on this battle that we're having with Joe in front and not paying attention to the possibility that we could run out of fuel before the end of this race. Still, going into Sector 3 of lap 27 now, maybe finally we'll consider looking at, let's, let's have a look. Going through the third to last corner, yes, we finally decided to check it and thankfully, we're only slightly under, so we will be able to fuel save to get to the end of this race. But as for our battle with Joe, that's that's now over. We don't have the fuel to battle with him, or realistically the ERS or straight line speed. So this may be the best result that we can possibly hope for as we go on the final lap of the Grand Prix. Uh, Charles Leclerc coming across the line to win the race very convincingly over Max Verstappen by 12 and a half seconds. That, that Ferrari is way too fast for its own good. We're trying to close back into to Joe now that we've saved up a little bit of fuel, but yeah, that battle's over and done with. He's 1.2 seconds up ahead from us. We're not going to get DRS into this final zone. Nearly getting ourselves a warning there. Don't know how that wasn't classified as off track. Track limits very, very strange on this game. But it looks as though P18 is going to be the best result that we can possibly hope for here. I think Marcus also managing to hold on to... Uh, P14 potentially, so in the end a decent result for Marcus, but very very poor result for us uh, Just not to grips with this car at all. We did have decent pace on the mediums at the end But in the end we couldn't do much more than that And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part four, mate. That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool 
even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari... So yeah, another get. win for Charles Leclerc, and Mercedes getting their first podium, I believe, as well of the season, with uh, Lewis in third. So, finally, more than two teams on the podium. Just, just wish uh, maybe we could get ourselves up into the points as well, where we're really struggling with this car still at the moment. Hopefully that can change very quickly with a few more upgrades coming on the car in the next few races. But uh, yeah, not too bad. It's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Charles Leclerc, currently leading the championship standings, extends his lead even further with this result. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Mick Schumacher gets my vote today. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Ferrari continue to extend the gap at the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time out. Be sure to join us once again as we continue to bring you all the excitement of Formula So yeah, 1. confirmation there, Marcus managing to finish in P14. 11 seconds up the road from us though, and 8 tenths quicker with his fastest lap in the race. So yeah, our pace definitely was not there at all. Uh, good boosts to Acclaim again. We're now Acclaim level 4, so very, very close to getting a second sponsor on the car, finally. And <laughs> hardly any money coming in at all. Massive damage penalties from both of us. We've had some failures of upgrades as well, but I think after we get these activities organised, I think we are able to get all of those back on the car before the next race. Uh, so not too much of a loss there, thankfully. Hopefully, uh, with those upgrades on the car by Imola. Uh, Imola is also one of my stronger tracks, or at least it was last game. We might be able to manage a good result. Uh, yeah, you can see both our chassis and powertrain upgrades failing. But yes, we are going to manage to get both of them up onto the car just, just before Imola. So very, very thankful for that. But anyway... Thank you all so much for watching. That is our video to an end. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing, aiming for 500 subs by the end of the year. But again, thank you all so, so much. And uh, we'll see you all again for the next round at Imola in a couple of days' time.